Welcome back to Peking University MOOC Bioinformatics Introduction and Methods. I am Ge Gao from the Center of Bioinformatics, Peking University. This is a supplementary learning unit for this week's topic on sequence alignment. This unit expands on and supplements the basic ideas in this week's three units with more advanced contents. But these contents will not be tested in alignments or exams. First, let's discuss how to improve the definition of the gap penalty. As we mentioned in Unit 1, a gap may have a length of more than one because multiple residues may be involved in an event of insertion or deletion. This is different from substitutions. Therefore, Gap penalty is often defined as a linear combination of gap opening penalty and gap extending penalty, which are usually not equal. In Unit 2 and 3, for simplicity, we used the same penalty score D to both opening and extending a gap in global and local alignments. To distinguish between opening and extending a gap, we need to introduce the concept of studded. As we mentioned earlier in Unit 2, there are only three possible alignments for a given pair of residues. We call them three possible statuses. M denotes an alignment of two residues, which are not necessarily the same. X means that the residue in the sequence X is aligned to a gap, or that there is an ins insertion in sequence X. Y means that the residue in the sequence Y is aligned to a gap, or that there is an insertion in sequence Y. We can then apply the concept of finite state automation from the field of computer sciences. Sequence alignment can be formulated as transitions between different statuses. Specifically, a transition from M to X or Y denotes the opening of a gap. A transition from X to X or Y to Y denotes the extension of a gap. A transition from M to M denotes the extension of the alignment without gaps. We can then write the corresponding dynamic programming recursive formula. MIJ stands for the score of the best alignment between subsequences of sequence X from the first base to the I space and the subsequences of sequence Y from the first base to the J space, with XI aligned to YJ. XIJ or YIJ stand for the score of the best alignment between the same. XIJ or YIJ stand for the score of the best alignment between the same subsequences when XI or YJ is aligned to a gap. Let's take a closer look at each formula. M i minus 1, j minus 1 means that x i minus 1 is aligned to y j minus 1. x i minus 1, j minus 1 or y i minus 1, j minus 1 means that x i minus 1 or y j minus 1 is aligned to a gap. M i minus 1, j means that x i minus 1 is aligned to y j, but because x i is aligned to a gap, which is opening a new gap, a penalty of d is subtracted. x i minus 1 j means that x i minus 1 was already aligned to a gap, so here the gap is extending, and thus a penalty of e is sub subtracted. Likewise, m i j minus 1 means that x i is aligned to y j minus 1, because, but because y j is aligned to a gap, which is opening a new gap, a penalty of d is subtracted. y i j minus 1 means that y i, mi I minus 1 was already aligned to a gap, so here, the gap is ex so here the gap is extending, and thus a penalty of e is subtracted. Similar to the f function in previous units this week, we can also represent these three recursive formula as filling in the cells on three planes using the dynamic programming matrix. Please note that backtracking paths might cross between planes.
Next, we'll discuss briefly about the time complexity of the global alignment algorithm. As discussed before, let's put the sequence of x and y on the x and y axis of a matrix. The i and j in fij become the subscripts of the elements in this matrix. The recursion of this formula then becomes filling the blanks one by one from top to bottom and left to right. Then, for two sequences of lengths m and n respectively, we need to fill, fill in m times n cells. Each filling takes a constant time c. The total time needed will thus be directly proportionally to m times n, and the time complexity is O m n. We can see that needleman wash algorithm reduces the time cost, the exponential time to the square time. The, the, the time complexity is reduced significantly. Okay, here are the summary questions for this unit. You are encouraged to think about them and discuss your answers and ideas in the online forum. Thank you. And that's all for this week. See you next week.